Hey friends, I'm Anya, a high schooler here at Bethel. Today we're looking at Acts 25, 13 through 26, 32, which talks about Paul's interactions and adventures with Festus and King Agrippa in Rome. Paul strongly states his case, pointing towards his hope in Christ's resurrection and humanity's need for our Savior. As I read this passage, I saw so much of Paul's nonstop energy shining through, specifically in how he beautifully explains the gospel and defends the resurrection. In Acts 26, verse 24, Paul is actually accused of being insane, to which he responds confidently during verse 25, I am not insane. What I'm saying is true and reasonable. Paul's hope in the resurrection and gospel never dies or grows hindered by the negative comments of his accusers and skeptics, despite their harsh words. Paul's devotion and allegiance to the Lord and his everlasting message of truth and life is a light spot in such a dark world around him. The determination we can see through this passage shows us lots about God's call to the character of us as Christians. As the situation escalates in chapter 26, verse 28, the king asks Paul, Do you think that in such a short time you can persuade me to be a Christian? Paul responds in verse 29 with, Short time or long, I pray to God that not only you, but all who are listening to me today may become what I am. Paul explains that his hope is to have everyone listening be touched by Jesus and come to know him. Hold on, everyone? How could we even begin to think about praying such a big prayer? Through our almighty God, we know that all things are possible in him. With God's incredible and enabling grace, we've been saved and are called to follow our Savior with our words, actions, and even our thoughts. We're asked to share the love and hope in the Lord's kingdom boldly and unashamed. Whether this be in our schools, workplaces, families, or amongst friends, we've been called to build the kingdom of God and stand in faith. In speaking the truth of the gospel, we shine light into a broken world, reaching out in God's beautiful and infinite love for everyone. In my own life, I see some of my friends who have come to the Lord over the last year after being invited to church, while others set examples of what it means to live boldly for God in school, sports, clubs, and activities, maybe simply by showing kindness to others or offering a smile. With that, I'll leave you with a couple of questions to think about this week. Can you think of any specific places of darkness or hurt in your own life or the lives of those around you that the joy of Christ's resurrection can speak into through you? Are you willing to pray big prayers like Paul did to build hope in the kingdom of Christ?